he could figure out a man of God from some other joker. Which passed by continually. Let us make a little chamber. I pray thee on the wall. So she was a woman of substance. You can't have an extension project just because a visitor is passing by if you're broke. Ah, that can preach right there. But I don't have the time tonight. Yes, yes. I perceive that this is the holy man of God. Yes. And let us set before him a bed, a table, a stool, and a candlestick. And it shall be when he comes to us that he shall turn in thither. And it fell on a day that he came thither and turned into the chamber and lay there. Gehaza, yada, yada. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I know you know your Bible. I'm going to stop my reading for there and get right into it. Say, I am moving from get through to break through. I say that again. I am moving. From get through to break through. Say that again. I am moving from get through to break through. One final time. I have moved from get through to break through. Yes. Times and seasons. Life is filled with transition. Today you may be going through a very good time. I may be having a bad day next week. I'll be the one having a good day, and you'll be the one that's not doing too well. People that are always complaining that things are always bad, they are lying. Let me say that again. I got a few relatives like that. Every time you see them, and the reason they're saying it, they want some from you. They don't want you, Jesus, but they want the blessing he put in your pocket. <laughs> Hi, Colin, good to see you, but I feel things bad. They're saying it first in case I may be having a bad time and they think I want to ask them for something. So they're saying it first. Things real bad, you know, and they're watching for the response. I say, well, you know, the Lord is good. Yeah, boy, the Lord really blessing you. <laughs> That's the butter. That's the peanut butter. Now they're coming with the bite. Now can you give me, huh? <laughs> That's when they put the bite on you. Yeah, times and seasons. Times and seasons. In this scripture that we read, we're dealing with a woman who went through a famine, got a breakthrough, got another famine, and then got another breakthrough. Herself, her son, her husband. Are you there? The scripture says the famine was sore in the land, but the prophet Elijah had given her a word, and on the strength of that word she lived. One widow even had oil multiplied. And then she was told to get ready for a famine. The Bible says it fell on a day. Somebody say fell on a day. When it says fell on a day, it means the day I had no particular distinction. It wasn't a specific, like a birthday or Christmas day or Thanksgiving. It was just an average, ordinary, anyhow day, but something happened on a day. Are you there? She wasn't trying to get something from God. It just fell on a day. Sometimes you, your efforts, your best efforts are put forward and it ends in futility. And just at the time when you're about to say, ah, what's the use? It <laughs> fell on a day. You weren't looking for a wife. You just went to the convention or the church service and it <laughs> fell on a day. Hubba hubba. She's so fine like vintage wine. But you weren't searching for that. But it just Fell on a day. Somebody said, this is the day for something to fall on me. Yes. And so the prophet came by. The prophet came by. This gift. Say gift. Say gift. This gift came by. And whenever the gift is present, whenever the prophetic word is present, whenever the prophet is present, potential is present. Ability, supernatural ability is present. Are you hearing? When the prophetic is present, potential is here. When it falls on a day, you must know that this day has a release. And it has a release to hand something into your hand if you know how to align yourself. Most people are oblivious when opportunity knocks. Sometimes I see the presence of God come in a room and I can tell who it came for. And I look at that person and they're just casual, laser fair, lackadaisical. They're not paying attention. And it took them five years to get to this day when God was going to give them everything they ever asked for. 
And at the moment he's about to release it, they are playing the fool. Sometimes I'm trying to give them the eye. Like, come on. You got it? Sometimes I give them a clue. God is moving it's, and it's you. It's, he wants you. It's, it's you. It's, don't, no, don't ask me, Pastor, how you know. I am supposed to know. I got the bruises on my back to prove it. I am telling you this is your day. Sometimes you literally scream at some people and drag them to the place of miracle. Then when they break, you say, you know, Pastor, it's a good thing I was fasting. You better shut up. Good thing you were fasting, you liar, you. If the Lord didn't have sufficient grace to point out an opportunity for you, you would never have had it. You have to be sensitive when you come to the house of God because potential is present. And at any time, what hasn't happened in years, in one moment, one word can shift your life whoosh, and move you from tenant to landlord. I love that. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said that over and over. I said it in Brooklyn, New York, Lafayette Avenue, preaching at a church day one night, and I stopped. And I said, may God move you from tenant to landlord. And that thing, I felt it in my toes. I said it again. May God move you from tenant to I said it in my other toes. I said, no, this is a moment. Something's going to happen here tonight. I said it again. A woman got up and ran outside, bawling, and then ran back in. Ran to a guy up on the stage and snatched him and started to have a little conversation with him. She had three houses. And she was willing to sell one of her houses to that guy up there for the price she paid 20 years ago when she came from Barbados. And she said she had always wondered if he wanted a house because she took him there to see it one time. Poor guy didn't have the money and pretended like that's not the kind of house he wanted, yada, yada. And shut it out of the house. But his wife was saying, that's my deal. That's my deal. And they did the deal that night in the service. All the agreements and everything was done. Then he went and got the thing signed up. Not a month later, he got an opening in Georgia. Sold a house in Brooklyn. And got a house five times the size in Georgia. With the money from Brooklyn. Are you hearing? Yeah. And he was joking around. 18 people in that church got property within the next three months. Who were living in basements for years since they came to New York. And I was describing the house they were living at. The rats and the roaches. Is that they're laughing. They rev like, you've been to my house? 18 of them. May God move you from tenant to landlord. You never know. <laughs> May God move me too when he moves you in the name of Jesus. Because it can fall on a day. Say with me, potential is present. 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 And whenever potential is present, there is a release. May I be the one to receive what God has stored up for me for 20 years in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. I perceive, she said, that this is a man of God. Yeah. And this guy, the potential is passing again. She knows that there's power on this man's life, but she doesn't know how to get it. Are you there? Sometimes you can hang around a good thing and never get from it. Sometimes you can hang around a prophetic person, but never get a word from them. Sometimes you can be in a place of potential, but it never seems to come on you. Everybody else and their proverbial dog getting a breakthrough, but not you. Are you there, church? Are you there, church? Yes, yes. And then the scripture zooms into the place that she lived. She said this woman was in Shunem. <laughs> Yeah, Shunammite woman. The word Shunam means uneven. It was not quite high, but it was not quite low. It was not quite a poor tongue, but it was not quite a rich tongue. It was not quite fertile, but it was not quite barren. It was not quite good, but it was not quite bad. It was not quite ugly, but it was not quite pretty. He was not quite handsome, but <laughs> the uneven place. Are you there? Crazy occurrences were happening at this border tongue. The word Shunem also tells us that it was the place where it wasn't happening. It wasn't a happening place because not far from Shunem was a place called Issachar. And Issachar, where all the prophets, that's where Elijah was going. He was going to the school of prophets. So that tongue 
have things happening. The Bible tells us, and the sons of Issachar were men who had an understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. The people in Issachar were sharp, they were insightful, they were prophetic, they were progressive, they were happening. They were on the cutting edge, and they were the edge, and they were the blade to cut the edge of the cutting edge. Everything good was happening in Issachar while she lived in Shunem. Many people can come to a church and still be in Shunem. While others, every time they come, it's Issachar. Every church they go, it's Issachar. Things just happen. Blessings just flow. Words are released. And it has to do with the mentality of the person. Nobody else is to be blamed. Are you hearing her, brother? Yeah. She was in this uneven place. Uh, Issachar was a place where the prophets were gathering. Are you there, church? She was on the brink. She was this close, but nothing was ever happening. The gift was always going somewhere else. The release was always happening somewhere else. The potential was always passing her and latching itself on to somewhere else. And she said, I'm going to do something about it. Are you there? I have missed too many God moments. I'm tired of Kronos moments. I want Kairos moments. I'm tired of the door almost opening and creaking, but never quite opening. I want to be in the thick of it. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to cause the gift to come to my house and stay. I'm going to invite it in. You must invite it in. By the way you behave yourself. Are you there, church? Yes, yes. And she told her husband, the, the house we have is too small. Let's accommodate this gift so that we can get a release. Let's enlarge this place and build a room. Let's knock down some walls and expand to make room for this God thing. God, things don't just happen by chance, happenstance, and coincidence. You, by an act of your will, can accommodate this God thing. And it means when you want this God thing, you have to make some room for it. You have to put out some things to extend some things so that the God thing can come. Say, I feel a God thing coming to my house. Say, I feel a God thing coming to my house. I feel it coming up the steps, coming in the room, coming in the kitchen, coming in the bedroom, coming in the shower. I feel a God thing. Yes. Coming to my house. Go. Hey, 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 hey. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So she knocked down this wall and expanded to make room for this God thing. And she joined the room to her house. Somebody say join. She joined the room to her house. Somebody say join. She put the roof over the room that covered her house and covered that little extension. So it was joined and had the same covering or the same roof. You got people coming to church as a visitor for two years, but they haven't joined. Oh yeah, that can preach. If I only had the time, brother. If I had the time, I would preach that. They just wouldn't join. They don't want the discipline of joining. They don't want the instruction of joining. The correction. The, the, no, no, no. I, I'll just be a nice visitor. I'm your friend. I'm the friend of the ministry. But I don't want to join. Not this woman. This woman said, I want that thing. And if I got to join it, I'm, look, I'm going to tear off this roof and join it. Somebody said join it. Yeah, it must come under the same shelter, the same covering. Because there's power in joining. She said, I'm going to build a bed. She's giving him rest. She said, I'm going to build a table. She's giving him food. She said, I'll put a candlestick. She's giving him illumination or light. She said, I'll put a chair, which is a position of authority. I'm going to put it there. Are you there? Say, I must join. I must not visit. Say, I must join. I must not visit. Say, I must. You see how it went? All the decibels went right. Ray, Lord. <laughs> Ooh, la, la. And then when she had done all of that, the prophet looked around and he said, Woman! What can I do for you? What do you want? What do you need? This woman was so accustomed to status quo and got so used to it that she didn't even ask for a son. The one thing that she really wanted from God was a son. Gehazi, the half-baked, greedy backslider, had more insight than the woman. Sometimes God can use an idiot to give you some wisdom. Gehazi was running behind gold and garments and stuff and lying and all kinds of things like that. His name, Gehazi, meant valley of visions. He walked with a prophet and he saw great things. Even one time, the, the chariots of fire and all that stuff. And yet, his heart was far from God. But for this moment, God said, I can't find anybody else to tell the prophet what she needs. I will use this donkey. I will use chariot and crow to feed my prophet. I will use the fish with the tax in his mouth. Yes. Yes. 
It's amazing what God can do and who God can use. Mm. <laughs> yeah, this woman didn't want the prophet to be a perpetual visitor. And now he comes and Gehazi saw it. She had no future generation. She had no successor. There was no generational planning. She said, my husband is old. Oh boy, that can preach. The thing that she was married to could not produce life. I can take that in so many directions. Yeah. You know, my, my funny brain is going off on a tangent. Say, say that, say that, say that. I got to keep it tight tonight. Are you hearing? There are people who are married to systems and churches that cannot produce life in them. And they stay there and Die there. Reverend, you don't know. My church is big and beautiful. <laughs> the church is not a building. If one woman told me, she said, Rev, if you see the building now, uh, it's got glass front and, and, t and she, she emphasized it as if to tell me something. She said, it's a beautiful building. And then I said, but the people misbehave and she laughed. She said, ah, no name, no warrant. She doesn't want to say that as beautiful as the building is, it's corrupt to the core. And she said, I had to walk away. And I know her. She's, that, look, man, that woman baked chicken like you wouldn't believe to raise money to build that church. This is what I know personally. Some days she will eat Ital and she wasn't a raster. Just so that the work could keep going, could keep going, could keep going. Yeah. Sometimes we'll take the we'll take the stuff to her. Say, no, you can't be eating ice. That's not your job. Yeah, yeah. They take some fish, take some shrimp, take some beef, take some chicken. Pastor, how you know? You just gotta look at the children. Children come by and they look at your food and they look at the stew and they look at the beef, they look at the chicken, and 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 you, you see the longing in their eye and you. You, you, you say, okay, these children need some, some, some obstacles. <laughs> ah, look, the pastor doesn't have to microphone your house to know what's happening there. Just look, no man. If you've got the Spirit of God, you can discern that the picnic needs some pittle in the food. It needs some <laughs> and she walked away from it. He said, there's no challenge. There's no challenge there. It's corrupt to the core. And as much as I've spent so much of my time and years in that I'm gone. And I'm not coming back. Yes. I smile at her. I give her a good offering too. Congratulations to you, lady. The man was old. She was married to a thing that could not produce. He couldn't produce mentally. There was no method for it to produce. The value system that people are married to can't get them pregnant, but they're staying there because it's nice. It's traditional. Ma went there. And the prophet said, according to the time of life, a son will appear. Are you there? Are you there? Nine months from now, lady, he spoke a word that released some power on her old husband and that old thing. Boom! Jump start his batteries and that man went that night. He felt the urge to merge and the old woman was hot and Stella got back her groove. If you mess with me, I will mess with me and if you tickle me, I got praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. Nine months later, the boy comes. Are you there? Ah, then he goes at the time of harvest. He goes out with his, with his father and dies out in the field. Attack comes to the head of harvest time. Just when they're near to, to getting their son to that age where he will take over the family business. Near to a breakthrough when attack comes. And she takes this boy to the room of expansion. Had that room not been built, there would be no place to take her dead son. In fact, she would not have had a dead son. She wouldn't have had a son in the first place. When you make room for God, he has a way. Oh, yes. Took him back home to the expansion. Not to the area of her smallness. She could have taken him to their room. But no, she wanted this boy to be identified with the sacrifice she made to do something for God. Are you there? Are you there? She was not going back to her room. She's going to the place of expansion. Say, I'm not going back to my small place. See, I'm not going back to my way of thinking. Yes, and then she goes off riding. People see her coming and say, is it well with your husband? Yes. Is it well at home? Yes. 
Is it well with your son? Yes. You can't tell everybody when it's not well. Because some people can't help you. Why are you telling the dentist about your car problems? He is not a mechanic. <laughs> Don't talk to the mechanic about your eyes. In other words, if you're going to explain a problem, don't tell it to people who can't help you. Sister, I'm looking for a house, you know. She got thrown out last week. She's out on the street sleeping in her mother's uh, kitchen or basement or garage. You telling her you want a house? It's under the wrong person. Some problems, you have to be very selective in who you tell it to because... If the person can't solve it, there is no need for them to know. She said, it is well. In other words, I'm not telling none of you my business. You weren't there when the prophet prophesied. You weren't there when I built the room. You weren't there when the boy grew up. I don't want you to be there when the boy died. Some people would have called the whole neighborhood up. They love to call you when they got trouble. Sometimes I see a number on my phone and I know it's trouble again. Because that number does not call more until there is trouble. Then two years up the road, after I haven't heard from them at all, uh, Pastor, how you doing my favorite pastor? <laughs> I said, what else you want? <laughs> Don't give me that favorite song because you never came to my church, not once. How could I be your favorite pastor? Don't get me at it now. Just tell me what it is you want and see if I can help. I will help. If not, then we don't have to have this conversation. You're wasting my time. I'm tired of users like you. Oh, Rev, you're pretty upset like Sister Sharon. Get you upset. It's not enough Sister Sharon. She don't get me upset. It's people like you that get me upset. You only call when you want to use a brother again. What is it you need? I'm a pastor. Call back another time. <laughs> 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 And if I go out and come back, my wife said, you know who called? I said, yes. They couldn't get through to me, so they're using her to get to me. I said, what is it they wanted? I said, I'll tell you later. <laughs> get my favorite food, get my favorite stuff, sweet me up nice, rub my ears. <laughs> I said, all right, girl, whatever Lola wants, Lola gets. Oh, she only wanted us and so. I said, okay, you know, do what you got to do. Oh, God, there's so many users in the world and in the church. Parasitic people who don't know the use of a preacher, a pastor, a man of God, until trouble got them again. If you see them come to church, you know something's gone wrong, and only pastor will have mercy to help, because the family already tell them, <laughs> don't come back. <laughs> And they are, you know, the, the funny thing is, as cruel as it looks, they know the mercies of God. They know that God touched your heart. They, they know that no matter how you vex with them, you will still do what you have to do. They are counting on God's grace in you. And they have faith that God has so worked on you that you can't turn them down if they come to you. They have faith. And it's the faith that I respond to. This rascal. They just know where to, which button to touch. Because when they can't touch mine, they touch the wife. And they know I don't like to see her miserable. So if she make her face long, what's up, honey? What can I do? With you? Solve it. Usually they never call to say thanks again. Those people are not here. That's why I'm saying it's so rough. <laughs> mm. She takes the body to the place of expansion. She was not going back to her smallness. Her potential is now asleep. Her son is dead. And she calls the prophet to wake him up. She had missed a lot of seasons, but now the prophet was going to come to wake him up. Is it well? Yes, it is well. She was prophesying. She knew what could happen at any time because the potential was present. He was heading to Issachar, but she was going to drag him back. I know you're busy. I know you're going out there, but my son is dead, and you're not going anywhere until you come back. You prophesied the boy. Now you're going to have to prophesy him back to life. She knew that the same power that could give this dead husband of hers, this old man, life, could bring life back to her son. Somebody say yes, yes, yes. Yeah, glory to God. Yes. The prophet went in and shut the door. Sometimes you got to shut the door. I said sometimes you got to shut the door. Say my door is shut. Yeah, shut to faithlessness. Shut to all that other stuff. 
My door is shut. The door of my last season is shut. It's over. And it's never coming back. I will never have the luck like I have. Never have the trouble like I had. All those days are over. It's a new day that's dawned upon my life. And it's going to stay that way. Elijah lays upon the boy. Somebody say he covers him. Say he covers him again. Yes, and the boy stayed dead. But the prophet kept praying. And the boy got warmer. Are you there? Are you there? Say with me, things are warming up. Yeah, the dead skin, the cold skin. Rigor mortis was trying to come, but as long as the prophet was there, the boy was warming up. There are people that come to church like that. First time they sit in the service, they're like a dead dog. Second time, they're like a dead frog. Third time, they're like a dead hog. Fourth time, they're like a warm frog. Fifth time, they're like a warm dog. Sixth time, they're like a warm hog. And as they keep coming, they keep warming up. Warming up, but you know, it takes long. They need to be microwaved three minutes to get some heat under them. And other people, they're coming from the get-go. They're in it. Are you there? Say, I'm one of those. Say, I'm one of those. Yes, yes, things are warming up. Elisha was going to wake up the sleeping potential. Don't sleep through this one like Rip Van Winkle. She had slept two seasons before in, in Shunem. She had seen power come and go. But this time, she was wake up. She was alert. She wanted God to do something. And she was going to remind the prophet that God could use him again. Say so yes. Yeah. And for some people who are here tonight, this is your wake-up call. Much like the prophet was going to deal with that dead boy, this is your wake-up call. And like Rip Van Winkle, you cannot sleep through a season. Awake, old Zion! Yes, yes. Yes, yes. It's time to wake up. God is moving. It's time to wake up. Expansion is happening. It's time to wake up. Men, wake up. Women, wake up. Children, wake up. Church, wake up! Glory to God. And then all of a sudden, the, the child sees. Oh, that can preach. Yeah, he was dead. Now, when, when you're dead, the first thing you do, you want to inhale. Because you've been out of breath for a long time. But the boy sneezed. A sneeze is a forceful exhale. Whoosh! You're dead, you want to breathe in oxygen. But instead, achoo! A forceful Exhale. Are you there? Yeah. You are not here to inhale. You're not here to soak in. You're here to exhale. <laughs> oh, I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave that alone. She got a miracle. But in Second Kings 7, the prophet says there's a famine coming to Samaria. You got your breakthrough, now you're going to have to get through. Leave this place. The season of abundance is over. It's a new season. Nothing lasts forever. Sometimes you have to endure hardness as a good soldier, and sometimes you have to enjoy the blessings of God. Breakthrough may be followed by get through. Good times don't always last, and bad times don't always last. Hardship doesn't last always. It's just a season. That's why you must treat people right when they have their down season, because seasons can change. The next move of God can put them to a place of blessing. Are you there? Don't sell out in your low season because the high season is going to come. This woman has lived through famine and lived through blessing as well. Say amen. Say amen. You can be in a famine while everybody else is blessed and praising God. And then you can be blessed while everybody else is downsizing and cutting back. Seasons change. Don't worry about all those who have in their season. Your season will come. Are you there? Are you there? Say with me, it's nothing but a season. More energy. Say it's nothing but a season. Yeah, she had to walk away from her house, walk away from her farm, walk away from her potential, go out with her son for seven years. And when it was over, she got a word again. Yes, it's time to go back home. God was organizing something for her. She was now going back. And at the time when she went back, Gehazi was talking to the king about the miracle of the boy who was prophesied to life. And, prophet, and when he sneezed and got back to life, was raised from the dead. That's when the woman walked in. Now, initially, when Elijah spoke to her, he said, do you want me to talk to the king for you? She said, no. He said, do you want me to talk to the army general for you? She said, no. But now, seven years later, she needs somebody to talk to the king for her. And Gehazi is doing that. She needs somebody to talk to the army general for her. And the king will do that for her. Are you listening to me? By the time she got back there to her place, all of her resources were done. She was broke. Seven years in a strange country is a long time for the little money to be finished. And then the king says, woman, you are the woman. This is your son. She said, yes. Yeah. He said, your son was dead. She said, yes. Yeah. He said, tell me the story again. This guy told me, but nothing like when the real person tells you. Yeah, you must get it from the horse's mouth. Yeah. 
And the horse started. <laughs> she was going to tell him. She said, yes, I was. He said, how old was your husband? He was 75. She, he's a 75 year old man that you pregnant. She said, ah, ah. King, if you were there. Yes, yes. He was old and for all of our young life, nothing happened. He was shooting blanks and I was barren. And you know blank and barren can't make a child. To couple with that, he was old. And you know he's so old. I'm not a spring chicken either. But she said, as we accommodated the gift, the potential was present. And there was a release. Yes. The Lord touched my womb and jump-started my husband's batteries. And when the boy was out with his father in the field, whether son stroke or whatever, he fell and died. And I took him back to the room where the prophet lay. And I put him on the bed and rode my donkey. She was well off. When you got donkey in them times, you were well off. That would be uh, equivalent to a, a BMW. That's right. That's right. She had her BM. And she went after the prophet and brought him back. And she said, he lay on top of the boy and started praying. And I could imagine the king listening with rapt attention. Nothing like a testimony. That's why you must talk. Let the redeemed of the Lord say his soul. Don't keep your testimony. To you. you don't know who is waiting on a word from you that will bless their socks off. There are people that you can meet that I can't meet. Yes. And the king said, oh, my goodness. All right. Uh, come, general. Whoever it is living in our house, put them out. But before they go, seven years of rent must be paid to this woman. And whatever was in the field at the time when they harvested her crops, they must give to her in terms of value too. My point is, she just came back home from getting through in the land where the seven year farm in which she went to spend the time. And the first day she arrived, oh God, the harvest from the room that she had built for the man of God. It not only gave her the son and gave her the resurrection, but now it gave her seven years wages in one day. Now you add up your salary that you get on the job. Multiply it by 12, then multiply it by 7, and see what that adds up to. She had just gotten through, and she had now had a breakthrough. Let's stand together. Give the Lord a good hand of praise. Give the Lord a good hand of praise. Yeah, give the Lord a good hand of praise. Yes, yes. Turn to somebody on your left and say, my season will change. My season will change. My season will change. Turn to somebody on your right and say, my season is changing. 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 It's changing. It's changing. It's changing. Good things are breaking out. Great things are breaking out. Fantastic things are breaking out. Unbelievable things are breaking out. They're breaking out on the east. Breaking out on the west. Breaking out on the north and the south. Breaking out in America. Breaking out in Canada. Breaking out in Jamaica. Breaking out in Guyana. Breaking out where I come from. Breaking out where I am. Breaking out for my children. Breaking out for my husband. Breaking out for my wife. Breaking out in their education. Breaking out in their finances. Breaking out in property, breaking out in businesses, breaking out in ideas, breaking out in health. Things are breaking out, breaking out, breaking out. Every wall of contentment is falling. Every wall of confinement is crumbling. Everything is holding back the move of God, the blessing of God, the victory of God, the joy of God, the peace of God. It's falling, it's falling, it's falling. My walls of Jericho are falling. My Goliath is dead and dying. In the name of Jesus, the rebuke of the Lord is on the house of the wicked. The rebuke of the Lord is on every sickness, every disease, every malady, every abnormality, every malfunction, every misalignment. Divine health is mine. Divine healing is mine. Divine visitation is mine. My potential is loose. My breakthrough is here. May I surrender. The God of the breakthrough has gone ahead of me. He is tearing up walls, destroying systems, removing confinement, breaking containment, loosing the cord, breaking the chain, opening large doors. Say yes! Yes. When the Bob puts it in words in the song, there's a natural mystic blowing through the air. If you listen carefully, you will hear. Something is happening in this day and time where God is moving people in such an incredible rate of speed. 
that what they hadn't received in years. In one moment of favor, one moment of favor can give you what years of labor cannot give you. Seven years of wages, the moment she arrived back home, she had gotten through. Now she was breaking through. Yes. When you're going through that get through time, don't complain, don't murmur, don't cry, don't give up, don't quit. Don't cry, uncle. The devil is a liar. He wants you to faint in your get through season because he knows what can come in your breakthrough time. getting through get through for those who are getting through get through no matter what happens no matter how hard it is no matter how painful for your own sake and for the destiny of all that depends on you get through because that which hasn't had a taste of oxygen for hours will suddenly Give out the thing that they were lacking. The same oxygen. A forceful exhale. And after he breathed out and sneezed, then he started to breathe and the prophet took him by the hand and presented him back to his mother. Yeah, the dead hope, the dead dream, the dead future, the dead generations to come. Back in the hands of the Shunammite woman. She may have lived in an uneven place, but her tenacity, her ability to know, she said, I perceive that this is a man of God. Something about him, she figured him out. You should know a crook from a man of God, man. By now, all this church you've been to, all this sermon you hear, you don't know scamp when you see one? Oh, somebody told me. Don't worry what somebody told you. You figure it out for you. Don't listen to rumors and make judgments on people. You figure it out. Our ability to figure out who a man of God was, was going to usher her into a new realm of destiny. The potential was present and the release came. And all of these benefits followed. The one seed she sowed seven years ago was still bringing a harvest seven years after. You cannot outgive God. I said you cannot not on a month of Sundays. You cannot ever outgive God. Yes, yes. She was in a position at the time to expand the room, to join herself to the prophetic, to the gift, to the potential that was present to give the release. She didn't want it to pass her anymore. She made a decision and she acted on it. She didn't just talk, she acted on it. Seven years later, this woman in Shonim, who didn't want to see the king, she said, I dwell among my own people. In other words, I'm not this uh, hoity toity. I'm not trying to get up with the big shots of the day. I'm not trying to rub shoulders with the monarch and all that stuff. I just want to be an average, ordinary woman once I got my son. But God would have none of it. What God was saying when she came back was, Woman, people like you must meet the king. Woman, people like you must know the army general. Every other scamp wants to get to know them. Why not you? You have accommodated my gift. No, I will accommodate you. And even blessings that you don't think you deserve, I will still give it to you. Good measure, press them, hey! shake them together. And running over, give the Lord a hand of praise. It's a new season, it's a new day, fresh and anointing, it's flowing our way, season of power, prosperity, it's a new season, flowing for me. Let's sing it again, it's a new season, it's a new season, it's a new day, 
Father, hallelujah. We will not be like the man who looks at himself in the mirror and leaves the mirror and doesn't know what he looks like. But we are going to remember. We are going to remember. We are going to remember. We are going to remember, Father. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. 